Howdy. And in my time with YouTube so far, I have spent, I don't know, uh, countless hours ranking a crap ton of things in Skyrim. So I thought it would be fun and fitting to do a compilation of all those rankings. So this is that compilation with some additional edits and some tweaks here and there to make it fit in more with my current channel, considering one of the very first videos I ever made was a ranking. Now don't fear, dear viewer, the rankings aren't going away. Consider this sort of a passage into a second season of sorts, which also brings forth a call to action. I need ideas. <laughs> My next ranking will be Cities Rank, which should come out next week if all goes to plan. But I want to know what you guys would like to see, so leave those comments down below for suggestions for future rankings in Skyrim. Now without further ado, let's get into these rankings. The ones in this video are Spouses, Followers, hairstyles, both male and female, beards, summons, armor sets, and taverns. So gear up, my friend. Let's get into it. Uh, so uh, here they are. You know, Skyrim spouses ranked worst to best. Oh, f 66 of them. Congratulations, Octave Son. You win the award for the worst person in probably all of Skyrim. This guy's a drunk in hardcore debt that he asks you to pay off, by the way. He emotionally abuses his only daughter, and is also very old. Why is this guy a marriage option, but not Serena, Bethesda? What was the thought process here? Next up is Kosnak. He's another drunk old man in debt. He's like Octave, but he didn't get lucky enough to find a single living soul willing to sleep with him for a night. Timba Wine Arm. This chick is literally mean to you all the time. She hates almost every home you move into and will let you know that. She doesn't like any children you adopt, and she's just all around a pretty unpleasant person to be around. Angrenor is a racist. What else needs to be said? Romlin Dreth sells illegal booze and wants to burn down other meat halls to get in good graces with his boss. Yikes. Orla is a priestess. S sounds good, right? Wrong. She's bland as hell, and is so stubborn that she will not move to any home you buy. She will literally never ever leave the temple other than for your wedding. Perth seems like a normal dude, right? Wrong. He's a d to his only friend. And this is the only man who gives in this time of day. F*** this guy. Kaldor, also known as the worst house Carl. He's just so boring. He even shares the exact look as a random bandit chief. I'm not even lying about that. They were... They didn't care about him that much. Also, um, for the house Carls, I don't have footage for most of them because I'm not the thane in those cities in the playthrough I got the footage from. You're just gonna have to settle for JPEGs for these ones. Sorry. Benor wants to overthrow the Jarl, which is a no-no unless the Jarl is Joffrey. Oh, and here's a fun thing. If you marry him and you have him as a follower and decide to part ways with him and send him home, he won't go home. No, 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 no. He will die and never be seen again. But poor guy took it very hard, and you just don't need that on your conscience. Viola is an old woman who is super annoying all the time. Gilfrey is kind of rude, but is also about as boring as my videos. Najata Stonearm is the worst of the companions. She's just really mean to you for no reason, like, all the time. Pavo Atius, or as I like to call him, the most generic man in Skyrim. Another day, another priestess. And whim is kind of mean, yeah, but she's also the only red guard you can marry in the game if you don't own any of the DLC, so that knocked her up a few points. Jordis the Storm Maiden is a house Carl, so no personality is a check. But she also will sometimes vanish when you tell her to part ways, so th th no. Roggy Notbeard has a dumb name, but he's also a drunk, but he respects the dead, which saved him a little bit. In order to marry Darkithigus, this is so fuck weird name, you actually have to rescue him from the Falmer, which is neat. I mean, he's an Argonian, which is rare, so that's another bonus. Why is he so low on the list? That's because after you save him, he literally says, thanks, man, and then he has no other unique dialogue. He's just kind of a bland slate after you save him. What's with the male drunks in this game? Seriously, Trobar is a drunk, but he's a companion, so he's higher than the rest of the drunks. Congratulations, dude. Villanjar is a guy who wants you to clear out a cave. The end. Old Phil is a very neat person, but by that I mean he does not like messes. That's like his deal. Neat. Artist the Bulwark. That's an awesome name, right? So good. But that's about all. I mean, 
he's a house carl, but he's also blind in one eye. And he has war paint. So he looks kind of cool. So he's not at the bottom of the list. Congratulations. Vorstag. This guy really, really, I mean, really likes capes and Dwemer stuff. That's about as far as his personality goes. Can you tell we're at the category with the boring people yet? Cena is the last priestess, and also the highest rated priestess in my opinion. She's not mean. She will actually move in with you. That, that's, that's the only reason she's better than the other two. House Carl Raya. The coolest looking House Carl in the game. And she's a red guard. But she doesn't have a personality because she's a House Carl. Gat Grow Shargak is a misleading name because this guy is super passive for an orc. Which is a nice change of pace from all the blood and guts most orcs are. Balrand is just another one of those nice guys that Skyrim has a lot of. Halbarn Ironfur. He's a refugee and just kind of like a chill blacksmith dude. Gorza Grabago. Um, that name. She's a female. That's right, a female orc. She's mean to her only student, but that's kind of like a tough love, so you kind of respect her a little bit for that. But she has a bad case of the, um, you know, the uh, clubbed head, which means it looks like someone hit her in, in the face with a mace. Ion is another house Carl, but she has some unique assets to her. She can be kidnapped for a certain quest, which is kind of neat, I guess. And if you marry her, her lines that she speaks are spoken in a more stoic way. But that's the only thing that really differentiates her from the other house Carls. Dinvar is a very talkative person who will slowly warm up to you, actually. So he's basically like a high school suitor. We suffered through the bad. We survived through the mediocre and boring. Now it's time to get to the ones that I consider pretty good. Wilhelm is a well-off man who owns an inn. And he also likes to help people, so he's a pretty good guy. At this is another member of the Companion Harem. He's quiet, which is a nice change of pace from all the people who don't shut their damn mouths. But that's about all he has going for him. Airy is the owner of a mill who loves her dad enough to try her best to pay off his debt. She's also just like a swell person to be around, I guess. She's nice, so she's better than a lot of the other blands. Onmund is a Nord who is extremely passionate about magic. He dislikes his parents because they don't understand why he's so passionate about magic. He's also kind of nice, so yeah. Camilla Valerius. A fan favorite, right? Yeah, she is. But she also has two stalkers. And they will follow you everywhere. To hell or to your house. So it's creepy. Janessa is a murderous psychopath who will kill anyone you ask. Which is a good match for most of you. Because I'm sure most of your houses have a shrine with Heimsker's head on it. Zilga is just a girl who loves her parents. Well, like a lot. She gets hit on a lot by other people but she refuses them. But she chooses you because you're the f chosen one. Highland is one of those poor people kicked out of the mead hall by the Reiklings, and she takes it upon herself to kind of keep everyone in her camp happy and keep them in high spirit, so go her. Scouts, mini, marshes. Can you guess what he does in his free time? He's also one of those glass half full kind of reptoids. But Omoag is special, you see, because if you do something wrong and the guards attack you, this white knight will actually defend you no matter what. Even if he's not a follower or anything, he won't run away from the fight either. He will straight up protect you until he dies. That's a nice husband right there. Moth Grow Bagel. Why Why do their names just sound so fucking stupid? He's the personal smith of the Jarl. He's also a kind-hearted orc who loves his sister dearly. He's like an all-around better version of the other generic orcs. Einathak is a rich man who runs a mine town. He's polite and wants the best for all those he takes care of. He also has a huge house, so you can just get a house without buying one if you're a cheap person. Thorex Vinius is a bit of a special case. This guy's lonely, like John Wick lonely. He hits on this girl all the time and buys her mead all the time, but she clearly isn't into him. And you can save him from being embarrassed again, I guess. Shavi is the only Argonian female you can marry in the game. She's very nice and very positive, but the first thing is really the reason she's this high on the list. Morwen actually starts off possessed at the start of Dragonborn DLC. Once you save her, she will tell you her very tragic backstory that I don't have time to go over right now, but she's still optimistic and just has a good vibe about her. Rhea is the newest and most optimistic of the companions. She's nice and super peppy, so it's all around just a very positive person. At first sight, Falamund seems just like your average nice blacksmith, but there's a catch with him. He actually has a full-grown son that will move in with you if you marry him. 
which is very unique, and this is the only character who has anything like this. Some people will probably find it annoying, other people will find it pretty cool, so that's why I kind of put him in the middle of the list. Ravin Saudri is a shop owner who really, really hates thieves. He's polite like most of the people on this part of the list. Mark Curio is a hireable mercenary, but there's a little twist to him actually. It's a sass. Go look at his quotes online, I don't have time to tell you all of them here, but you'll quickly see why he's loved by the community. Yasolda is probably most people's first wife in this game. She's early in the game and she has a nice personality. But other than the fact that she can own many of the stores if you kill the owners, she's just kind of average, honestly. Quintus Naval is just a normal guy who loves his master so much he is willing to do anything to keep him safe and keep him happy. Spoiler alert, master dies in the quest. But he will respect you for helping his master the best you could. And he's just a nice guy and is loyal to you after that. Muriri, hope I said that name right, is a revenge-filled woman who hates anyone who wronged her. So she has an awesome and unique personality for any of your thief slash dark brotherhood as characters. Skyrim's most eager adventurer is of course Eric the Slayer. He's optimistic and has an actual personality arc. He's also an homage to a real life huge fan of the series who sadly passed away so he's very special in that regard. Gorbash the Iron Hand is by far the best male orc marriage candidate in the game. He has a complicated story like with treachery and abandonment and stuff like that, but believe me, I don't have time to go over it, but he is amazing, and he's probably one of the coolest looking followers in the game as well. Uthgur the Unbroken is a woman who has a horrible past. She has many regrets in her life, and maybe you can help her with that if you know what I mean. <laughs> and the last orc on the list, and in my opinion the best, is Borgak the Steelheart. She's basically set to marry some random savage orc. She hates the fact that she has to do that. So you can convince her father to let her go, and then you can marry yourself. She's also my spouse in the latest playthrough, so there's a little bit of bias there. Breaking in at number 10 is Dravinia the Stoneweaver. She is literally an earthbender. A nice, grateful earthbender who wants a better life. Enough said. Avara Sarethi is a Nornroot expert who has had a very troubled past. Her and her sister will be happy to tell you about it, so you can go ask them in the game. They're pretty easy to find, just Google. But trust me, she's pretty cool. She's also the only Dunmer in the game, along with her sister, to have normal eyes, which is another unique asset that she has. Tari is the kind of woman who will step on you. She's the only marryable high elf in the entire game, so that's very unique about her. And she has a really fun personality that's kind of mean but entertaining at the same time. She's just all around a pretty awesome NPC to be around. Probably the most ditzy and poppy personality in this game belongs to Brelia Marion. Her quest, the tiny little quest she gives you, is one of the most entertaining three minutes in this game for me. It's just so fun and gets her personality across so well. She's also just nice and sweet, easily earns her way on this part of the list. Here she is ladies and gentlemen, Lydia is here. Fan favorite for a reason, we all know her, best of the house Carl's enough said. By the way, she's dead in my game, so here's her grave. Uh, please forgive me, I didn't realize she was dead, and I had already saved, and auto saves were too far gone, and I couldn't find her body. So, uh, Farkas is the gothy, edgy boy we all know and love. He's a bit of a meathead, but he has kind of a great personality in the end. He has a rich backstory as well. Far too much to list here, but trust me, he's pretty fantastic. Miol the Lioness. She would have been number two, or number three, if it wasn't for one red-headed annoying reason. Aaron. This dude will follow her anywhere. Your house, her house, the middle of the woods. The only way to get rid of him is a mod. Or... Ayala the Huntress is number three. I know, I know, so originals, but she's well known for a good reason. She's unique, she has a good personality, she has an amazing design compared to the other women in the game. She's super fun to be around, and she's a werewolf. Vilkus, 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 you came so close to being number one, but sadly you were just short. Vilkus is another werewolf that's also the trainer of the companions. He's a tough teacher, but he does it out of care for them. He's twins with Farkas, so his backstory is intertwined with his, which is a good dynamic. But I believe Vilkus is just all around a better version of Farkas. He's just less edgy. No one talks about my number one. Just no one ever mentions him. I never see his name anywhere. But Sondus Drenum is a rather unknown Dunmer to most. But trust me, he came against hard competition. 
but in the end, he's easily number one. He's a miner who cares for his friends so much that he gives you a quest to go get medicine so he can give it to them so they don't get sick from the heavy dust they experience in the mine. He's super polite to you, and the best of all, there's a girl in the small camp he's at. Her father's gone. So he treats her like his own, stating that he will do anything to make sure that he is a good influence for her so she comes up in life right. He's helping her at every chance he gets, and he just wants a better life for her. I love this guy, and I wish he was better known. That's a large reason I have him as number one. We all know Vilkus and Ayla and Farkas, but give some love to the Drenom, dude. We're going to be ranking all the followers in Skyrim from worst to best. Buckle the hell up, because this one's going to go on for a long time. In terms of ranking, I took mainly three things into consideration. Well, it's important to know the class of the followers, so you can see if they really fit your playstyle. So I will be giving those for each entry. Also, in case you didn't know, each follower can reach a certain max level, then they stop leveling. So some are more powerful than others when you take this into account. But the most important part of my rankings was the person's personality and uniqueness. None of us won generic Nord number 35 following us over a vampire princess. Come on now. And sometimes I cannot ignore how horrible a character is in combat. Even if they have a good personality, sometimes it just doesn't outweigh the combat horribleness. My descriptions of the followers will be a quite a bit longer than the spouses because I have to go over more for the combat aspect of each character. I present to you Skyrim followers ranked worst to best, all 71 of them. Let's go, baby. With any worst to best list, we start off with the bottom of the barrel. Kostak, you got second worst in my spouse's video, and he's been promoted to the absolute worst, so congratulations, my guy, only because the worst spouse isn't a follower. He's actually not the worst in combat, being a warrior with a below average max level of 30. It's everything else I despise. He's a drunken debt who wastes away at a bar, and he just wants you to fight him because he's drunk and he'll follow you if you beat him. I just wish you could beat him to death during the fight. Yeah, he's not good. Now Ogle has a cool quest around him. Oh, d did I say him? Uh, I mean the town he's in. Ogle is nothing unique. His name's fun. Now that's all about Ogle has. These orcs in this quest had so much more potential, man. And yes, I love orcs as much as the next guy, but it doesn't add to him. Warrior, max of 30. You know how I mentioned Ogle just a second ago? Yeah, Lob is literally the exact same but a ranger. Too bad some cool ass names were used for these filler characters in this quest. Yeah, man, that's sad. Max level of 30 like Ogle Bogle. Benor is a person who plans to overthrow the Jarl. That's literally his only purpose. He will never do it because there's no quest or anything revolving around him. Just beat him in a fight and bing bang boom he's your follower now. He's completely average in terms of combat as well, being a warrior with a smaller max level of 30 just like Kosnak. Rogi Notbeard is the weakest character in the entire game to have as a follower, being a minor class with the lowest max level in the game of only 20. His personality is that of a thousand other drunks we all know well in Skyrim. The only redeemable factor is that he shows respect for fallen warriors, and he has a small amount of funny things he might say. But if you take him with you, he will die. He's not this slow because I hate him like I hate Kosnak. He's this slow because he will die if he leaves the village, due to weakness. No point in babysitting a guy who actually isn't that unique at all in terms of personality either. Okay, these demon dogs look pretty rad, right? But they can only get level 5. They are extremely weak, meaning they will die in like 2 fights. If you don't don't want to be the reason two dogs die, then just let them chill out the castle. Ugor is another person from that orc quest I mentioned earlier, but she is better than the other two because she has a tad bit more character. She's actually a town guard of that quest. Having some dialogue around keeping the camp safe, so she's the first line of defense, so she actually has unique dialogue with the other characters about that. But sadly, she's just a ranger with a max of the average of 30. The level, she sucks. She's the only female Bosmer follower, but other than that, she's got nothing at all. She literally has three lines of unique dialogue outside of asking her to follow you. Bandit, max of 25. I'm going to go ahead and put the Steadfast Dwarven Sphere and Spider together here because they're very similar and almost identical. They're a very cool novelty, don't get me wrong, but in terms of usefulness, they aren't that good. They cannot carry items for you, and they don't have a cool story around them or anything unique. They're just, you know, the Dwarven tech you see laying around. But they're fun for what they are. I would just feel bad putting people with actual personalities and care put into them above these guys, you know. Armored Troll is an armored troll. No backstory, no complexity, but they're also armored trolls, which is kind of cool. 
but a small max of only 14. Armored Frost Troll is an Armored Frost Troll. <laughs> okay, you get it. Better than the normal because they're frost. A slightly better max of only 22. If you didn't know, I love dogs, okay? The stray dog isn't this low because I'm an animal hater. He's not too high because I compared him to the other dogs. And well, the other dogs I like more. You'll see why in a bit. The stray dogs can get to a max of 25, which isn't that bad though. Najata, Stone Arm, is the worst of the Companions Guild, bar none. She's just a huge you. She's a warrior with a max of very low 25. She is a blocking trainer, but that's the only positive I have for her. Sorry to her supporters, I know you're out there. I just don't see the draw, personally. Aeola is a cannibal. She's a Nightblade, of course. Max of 30. Now, okay, if you like having an unorthodox follower, go ahead, man. I know people like her. But in order to get her to follow you, you have to assist in a cannibal party. She's a cannibal, my guy. Belrand is probably Mr. Generic himself. No point to this guy over many of the others. I can literally not think of anything else I can say about him. Bell Sword, Max of 40. So yeah, he's better at combat than most of the others at the bottom, so that's why he didn't get too low. Okay. That about does it for the followers that I think aren't that good overall. Let's now move to the followers that I think are at least decent enough. Stinbor has a few pieces of dialogue that make him not the most boring person ever. When you trade with him, he says, Feel free to give me all the gold to hold. And other few small things that randomly align to him being a greedy person, which is at least some kind of personality. That's all I'm gonna say about him. Warrior 40. Reikling warriors are fun, okay? They have no unique names or anything, they're just fun to have. These little goblins are unique to see running around trying to kill dragons. They get tons of points for just the weirdness of it. They can also get to a max of 23, which is not bad, but meh. Talvis is standard and not too amazing. Talvis owns a store, but the catch is it becomes unavailable when he leaves the area the store is supposed to be at. That's bad. His max is 25. That's bad. He's a conjurer. That's fun. And he has a meh quest. That's okay. Pretty boring in the end if you ask me. Kaldor has to honestly be the worst house Carl hands down. Nothing at all is even somewhat special about him. Lydia would be so disappointed. Warrior, max of 50. For combat, he's competent, so he's not at the rock bottom. But I personally think personality outweighs combat ability when selecting someone who will be by my side for potentially hundreds of hours. Horstag looks really freaking cool. A shame that all that just went to waste because he doesn't have any unique personality to go with him. I mean, he's a nice guy. He's a good fighter, being a warrior with a max of 40. I mean, I don't dislike him, but... When I compare him to the big boys, he's meh. Chovar is nothing unique at all other than the fact that he's a companion. He's just the average drunk guy in Skyrim. Nothing all that good, but he's higher than Najata and a few of the others because he, his drunk nature can make him somewhat entertaining seeing him stumble around and he can have some pretty funny quips every now and again if I'm being honest. He's a warrior with a max of 35, slightly above average. Dark Brotherhood Initiates, female and male variants, are both amazing in combat, being assassins with a huge max of 100. But they are just initiates with no names, no personalities to speak of, so they are just this low because I'd rather have someone with me that's not just a weapon. They only made it this high because I cannot ignore the combat ability. That's why this list is extremely hard to arrange. Sometimes you gotta put someone who has somewhat of a personality behind people who have good combat ability. But these guys just suck wee wee in the personality department. Galadir is... okay. He's a warrior with a max of the standard 30. He has a small quest to kill a necromancer who are disturbing his ancestors' graves. He's a good guy. He's just trying to do the best by his ancestors, and I like that about his personality. That's why he's above some of the others. He's not bad, but not particularly great either. Next. Vigilance is a dog you can buy in Markarth. But it's really good you do that because the owner of him is a cannibal probably feeding him human meat. He deserves better. Max of 25 like all of the doggies, mostly. Athis is a follower I don't have anything good or bad to say about. Average personality and average combat ability. Actually, maybe even closer to bad in that regard. He's a warrior with a smaller max of 25. He's a one-handed weapon trainer, and that's useful. In the end, he's not bad, but he's also known not particularly great. Rhea is another companion. She's the standard new recruit stereotype, eager to learn and to be better. She's also nice to you, warrior, max up to only 25 sadly, so her biggest downside is how weak she is in combat sadly. She would be quite a bit higher if she could just hold her own a little bit more. Next up is Adelaisa. She has a fun quest about pirates, and that's fun. I like that. She's very stoic, and that's all very likable, don't get me wrong. The big downside to her is that she is extremely, and I mean extremely weak. Being a crappy citizen class with a very low max of only 25, 
good personality, but man, I couldn't put her any higher because how weak she is. Fandal is someone we all know because he's so early in the game. Yeah, the love triangle guy. He's snobby and uptight, but he's actually not bad in combat being a thief with a max of 30. But he's also an archer trainer, which is not that bad. It's pretty useful to have that. Oh yeah, also he's the only male Bosmer follower. That's cool. And also, Archer companions are pretty damn strong in this game, so I'm giving him points for that too. Ingjar gets an award for the Dawn Guard character I completely forgot existed. Why? She's another weapon. Meaning she's the same as the Dark Brotherhood initiates. No personality, she's just a warrior with no max level, so she's powerful as hell. Meh. Dorak is Dorak. Meaning you don't know who he is because he's Dorak. He does have a huge benefit to him though. He has no max level. He's also a ranger so in combat he's actually not bad. These guys might have had no personality but they're freaking great in combat. Hard to ignore that. Agar is the one who journeys with you at the start of Dawn Guard. So I like him quite a lot. Seeming to be similar to you with the Dawn Guard at the beginning of the game. Not really knowing much about them but wanting to save the world the best he can. He came with you to Dawn Guard with Paw's Axe as he calls it. So I love that he's the underdog. He's also a bandit with a tiny max of only 25. Man, I wish it would have been higher. This is a personal bias because I like him so much, so if you would rate him lower on your list, I understand that on that one. Bran and Skiolang are huskies. They're adorable, man. They can only get to 25, but they're cute huskies with vests, man, come on. They aren't as cool as some of the more developed followers, but they're huskies. Oh man, I do not like being mean to house carls, okay, because they have their merits for being so good in combat and so loyal to the dragonborn. But Iona is just another no personality house carl. Standard warrior max of 50. I know people like her, but I couldn't bring myself to put her over people who have actually had time put into who they are. They're great in combat, and I understand why people like them, that's why the house cars are going to be around this area in this list. Argus the Bulwark is hot, none of us are denying that. But other than his looks and his bomb tattoo, there's nothing. He's a house carl, with nothing unique at all. Warrior max of 50. Say hello to totally not Lydia. Sorry to the Jordis fans, but she's just a no personality house carl again. Lydia and Jordis are very similar, but Jordis doesn't have the privilege of being Lydia. But house cars are good in combat, so I have to give her some points for that. Warrior max of 50. Valdemir is the only house carl who isn't a warrior. He's a sorcerer with 50 as his max level like the standard house carls have. But other than that, he still suffers from the house car syndrome. Too bad too, but I'm glad he's actually a sorcerer. That's why he's higher because he's more unique for a house carl. Arrhenia is a lady looking for lost artifacts. She has a fun quest that she is always super polite to you during. She's also a conjurer, so she can come in handy for, you know, your ranger classes and stuff like that. She can get to 30, which is on the lower end. It's actually about the average. She's all around pretty alright in my opinion. Okay, you made it through the middle of the road, which I consider the most boring part of the video. Time for the followers I believe are actually pretty damn good to have with you. Now I didn't know who Aneki was before this video, but hell, I think she's pretty damn dope. She's a miner with her husband, but she ain't about that safe life, she wants adventure. And well, you're just the person to help her with that. Oh also, she can dual wield with a pickaxe, but only a pickaxe, I think that's kinda hard. Honestly, that's kind of metal. She's a ranger with the average max level of sadly only 30. Uthgird is in the middle of the road in terms of this area of followers. She has an admittedly sad backstory. She's okay in combat with a max of only 30 and her class is warrior. But you do get a free house when she's a follower. So there is some good in, at the start of a playthrough because she's also in white run. Gregor is another house carl, so personality is hard to come by. But hey, Gregor was actually given love. He actually has a large amount of unique dialogue for a house carl. He also looks like a bad blacksmith and that's another big thing warrior max of 50 okay Anmun, i'm sorry but compared to the other college students you aren't as good Anmun is a sorcerer with a max of 30 and he's already weaker and less special than the other two he's eager to learn and get better so he's not downright bad i just consider him just uh, better than average Rhea is a house carl who stands out from most of the other house carls mainly due to the fact that she's one of very few followers who can dual wield She's a warrior with a max of 50, like all other house carls, mostly. But she's also the only non Nord house carl in the game, which is another unique aspect to her. She's pretty dope in terms of house carl standards, at least. Okay, Salan is a warrior with no max level. So starting off, he's pretty damn powerful in combat. He also has a kind of fun backstory with the leader of the Dawn Guard. 
so I like that about him. Other than that though, he doesn't really have anything that makes me adore him, if that makes sense. He is quite better than the other Dawn Guard weapons, as I call them. He's just a more fleshed out version of the Dawn Guard followers. All the damage and power with an actual small story. Okay, here comes the divisive one, Cicero. Cicero is loved by some and hated by some. He's an assassin max of 50. Assassins are actually great for followers, so he checks the box in the combat department. It's his personality that divides the fandom. He's a literal crazy psychopath in every manner of the word. Because I didn't know where to put him, I'm just putting him a little bit better than average because of his uniqueness and I'm too scared to put him too low or too high for pissing off some parts of the fan base. Okay, okay, I know Miko is just a dog, but I love this tiny little story he has. You find him with his dead master and you find a book where the old master asks you to find it in your heart to adopt this good boy. I freaking love Miko. He can also get to level 25 like most dogs. Okay, I ragged on Rogi for being so weak. And yes, Seven is also super weak with the same low, low max of only 20. But he's also the only bard class in the game, for a follower at least. Meaning he plays music for you when you travel around the land and he plays at the ends with other bards playing music and just keeping things happy. Happy. He's weak, yes, but he's also fun to have for a lore playthrough. Just give him armor and a bow and just hope he doesn't get himself killed. Relia Marion is a mystic who can reach a max level of 30. So gameplay wise, she doesn't really bring anything incredible to the table, other than the fact that she summons quite a lot. But it's her personality why I absolutely love her. She's extremely ditzy and corny, always eager to learn something new, so overall she's fun to have with you for her personality alone. Janessa holds a warm place in everyone's heart because her heart is so freaking cold, but we all love her for it. It's not hard at all to say why she's so fun to have. She has a fun personality and oh yeah, also Ranger Max of 40. I really find myself liking Borgrak the Steelheart. For an orc, she doesn't want to be held down by the clan like most other orcs are. She really wants to adventure, and you can convince her father to let her leave and be with you, be that in marriage or as a follower. She's also not too bad in combat, just an average warrior with an average max of only 30. She's not even as strong as a house Carl, but I do like her little story she has, so she got pretty high. Gorbash is one of the sickest looking mother in the game man. He also has a pretty neat backstory evolving around honor and treachery and betrayal and trying to redeem yourself. In combat he's not bad either as a ranger with only max of 30 but hell he's great for an amazing story alone in my opinion and you can walk around looking like you have a freaking hired bodyguard with you. Teldrin is a badass. He looks amazing. He has such a sick backstory that's covered in weird mysteries and unanswered questions. He's also the only follower with the amnesia perk, so he's naturally amazing with one-handed weapons. He has a huge max of 60 and is a spell sword. Probably the best class to have as a follower. He's dope, man. Also, he's over 200 years old. Erender is another one of those followers that I didn't really know much about before I started this video, but I kind of grew to love him. See, he wants to stop the Oblivion from taking over Skyrim. He is super polite, and he will always have a unique comment on any given location you take him to. Unique, recorded dialogue for every location almost. He's very powerful being a unique class of priest with a huge max of 50. If you're a warrior, you can go with this guy on everything. You go ham with him. He's trying his best to atone from his past sins, so yeah, dude, he's pretty dope. Autar is someone I really like, actually. He has a weapon that can only be obtained literally only from him, which is fun to have him use it if you're a ranger. He looks super unique with Executioner Garb, which no other follower actually has. He's actually a pretty nice guy, too. I mean, yeah, he does cut off people's head for a living, which might make people step back and quench a little bit, but look in the mirror, my friends. Autar cuts off the head of criminals after trial. We run into keeps and caves murdering literally hundreds of people, so yeah, Autar is not that bad compared to us, if you ask me. Warrior, sadly, with the only low max of 30, that's the only downside. Karjo is freaking awesome. He's a Khajiit, so that's already cool. Not to mention he's a super nice guy who wants to pay off the life debt he thinks he owes to the people who saved his life. He's sadly only able to reach 30, but a warrior class is nice. All in all, you cannot go wrong with the buff cat. Eric the Slayer holds a special place in the hearts of anybody who knows about him. That's because he's actually based off of a huge real life fan of the franchise who sadly passed away. But not just that, because he actually has a cool great little story around him where you have to convince his dad to let him go on an adventure with you. He's also a pretty rare class of barbarian with a max of actually 40. Pretty high. 
so he's pretty damn good in combat as well. Here's to you, Eric. Ilya is dope as hell. She's a mage with a big max of 50. That's already good, but another huge benefit to bringing her with you, or just meeting her in general, is the quest she has around her. Her mom is wanting to be a hag raven, and not the frisky kind that you marry on your one drunk night. Ignore that, I'm sorry. Anyway, she wants to stop her crazy mother from becoming a monster. She's great and worth your time if you'd like. Okay, if you want to know why Mercurio is amazing, in my notes where I wrote down some things over characters so I could arrange them better, my notes for Mercurio was personality of a god, boy makes even Alduin drop those drawers. Destruction mage, so fire is a go, with a slick max of 40 baby, higher than average. Mercurio made his way this high through his silver tongue alone. Now it's time for the top 10 baby, you made it. These are the ones I consider the best of the best. Okay, I have a regret I must mention. I was too mean on my guy Darkethus in my spouse's video. He has a unique quest to release him and venture through a huge dungeon to gain your freedom together, killing Falmore and tons of other enemies. It's actually really fun now that I actually take another look at it. He can also dual wield with just a pickaxe like someone could earlier. Oh yeah, he's also the only Argonian follower in the game, so he gets a ton of points for that. Ranger, max of 30. Rallus Sardarius is basically the Sondas Drenum of the followers, meaning he's quite unknown by most people, but my guy is getting slept on. He is a minor class, which is a weird class, yes, but his max is 60, which is pretty high, but this is where it gets bonkers. He has a special amount of perks over every other follower. With all their attributes combined, he is considered the most powerful follower in the entire game, actually. Yeah, this guy. But well, he was corrupted by a demon and maybe killed a lot of miners. Uh, that's bad, my guy. But he, he kind of has amnesia and doesn't really remember it. But at least he seems really sorry and feels really bad about it. But eh, he's not even as quarter as boss as Drenum. But I still think he's amazing in his own regard. We all know Ayla, a werewolf badass. She's a thief class with a max of 50. She's also an archer trainer. Ayala is amazing, man. The definition of a strong female in Skyrim. We all love her. And did I say a uh, werewolf? Lydia is Lydia, okay? She's amazing because she's Lydia. We all have one specific place in our heart simply labeled, yeah, Lydia's house of amazing in combat with a standard house car of only warrior with a max of 50 like normal but she's Lydia man I'm pretty sure I would have a hit out on me if I didn't put her this high on the list and oddly enough I would be the one putting the hit on myself Vilkus is a definition of one of the best followers in the game he's a warrior with the max of 50 he's a father figure in every sense of the word he's also a werewolf thought I should go ahead and mention that little note I also go back and forth on Farkas or Vilkus but in terms of followers I say Farkas is ahead of him a bit that's why you haven't seen him yet, Der. Farkas is a blacksmith with a max of 50. In my spouse's ranked video, Farkas was under his brother, and well, the community quickly let me know that they love him far more than his brother. So I definitely took that in consideration when placing them in this list because Farkas is just a lovable, edgy idiot. So personality is a huge win. He easily deserves to be this high gameplay-wise too. Frey is basically the Dragonborn DLC's version of Serana, but Serana hasn't shown up in this list, so you can tell which one I think is better. Frey is still amazing though, a real stoic woman who can handle her own. A woman with no max level makes her hella good. She has quite an amazing story to her, so picking her is a good pick in the end. Miol the lioness, baby. Amazing backstory, blah blah blah. She's great, we all know this stuff. Miol is freaking awesome. Taking care of her town and being the sole superhero in the whole province. Freaking awesome look and amazing battle ability being a warrior with a max of 40. My boy Jezargo. This man got snubbed because I cannot marry him with every one of my characters. For gameplay, he's extremely powerful with no max level and always devastating the entire area with spells. As for his personality, he strikes it out of the park again. Jezargo has some of the funniest lines of dialogue in the entire game. My boy easily deserves to be this far. He is a trusted ally of countless number of dragonborn for a reason. Also, his class is combat sorcerer. Number one is obvious. The most developed and amazing follower hands down, that being Serana. She has an absurd amount of love put into her backstory, and playing Dawngar gives you the full extent of it. And not to mention she is a crazy powerful like the vampire class, which is the only one in the game with a max of 50. But because she's a vampire, she is constantly sapping health and summoning tons of allies. Super good. The rest of this list required me to put some actual thought into it and you know put down notes and stuff like that. Not for Serana, number one baby. 
we did the spouses. Then we did the followers. So the logical next step is... Hairstyles. What am I doing with my life? Now, a few really quick notes before we get started, okay? The hair colors may vary mainly for either two reasons. Either to see the details in the hair more clearly, or to just make it fit the style kind of more accurately. Next, certain orc hairstyles are identical other than what is at the end of their ponytail, so they may be kind of bundled together very closely. I will not include bald or just a little bit of fuzz because what can I really say for those? Also, some hairstyles are from multiple races, like humans and elves have the same hairstyle, so I'll just consider that one style. And lastly, these are my opinions, so don't be upset if I rank your favorite style low. I mean, come on, I'm ranking hairstyles. I don't mean any harm. Now here we go, baby. You have the most unappealing hair I have ever seen, my guy. The chosen one shouldn't look like an NPC no one wants to get close to or even talk to. Now at this point, just shave it off, my guy. There is no saving it. When I think of the Dragonborn and all their large adventures, the last thing I think of is Uncle Giuseppe. <laughs> Uh, okay, okay. This Poindexter looking hair looks so derpy to me. I wanted to put it really high on the list because of the comedy factor, but I rated it normally at the end. Watch out. The Chosen One is about to go through a midlife crisis. Everyone hide your pool tables and motorcycles, or whatever the Skyrim equivalent is. Okay, now we are rocking the Danny DeVito. Nothing against that man. I love him as much as the next guy. Honestly, he gave this hairstyle a couple of points. That's why it's above Poindexter. Forgive Give me if you like this one, but the two opposite facing horns look so stupid, man. Look at him. He's asking for help. There are so many of the- <sighs> This one gets bonus points for the tie in the back, but still, this ain't Aragorn. Okay, with the little sharp end, it feels so mismatched to me, man. This looks off. This is better than the Mega Man spike, but still not good. Longer is better with this style, surprisingly, but you can see where it is on the list still. Bad Bad bedhead, but not in the sexy kind of way. Bad bedhead, but with a braid. This looks more like an old martial arts master than an orc haircut, but it's the best of this style. What is happening up there? And back there. Most generic haircut in history. Neither here nor there. The very definition of boring. Okay, I know what they were going for, but from the front, this just looks kind of funny to me. Say hello to the most boring elf you couldn't carry a conversation with to save your life. This is basically the last one, but taller. And we all know that taller is better, or at least that's what every self-obsessed woman on Instagram says. One of the worst ones is improved so much by the length added. That was an odd sentence. This one's meh. I kind of don't feel anything one way or the other about it. This is an elf, but also a mad scientist. There are just better options in my opinion. Once again, another one that's kind of just super boring and not unique at all. This looks weird. This one looks like a genie. Its length adds something distinctly orcish though, so that's okay. Bandit mohawk, but with some edgy flair. It is a phase mom because this looks kind of weird. Yeah, take this thing and move it down. And suddenly it isn't nearly as funny, but it does look better. I don't know, man. A weird solo braid in the back of the head looks strange to me. Not bad though. A little dangle on the back of the head. Looks decent, I guess. Same as the last one, but now it's a horse's tail. My guy, it looks like you got a perm, but I don't think those exist yet, so how did this happen? This one looks very feminine. I'm not sure what it is, but it just kind of looks meh. Okay, I know what they were going for, but this looks a little off to me. I don't know why. This one doesn't look bad, but to me, it just looks a little empty. Same thing goes for this one. This one also looks a little empty. I do prefer the curve over the straight with these, but eh. This is just bald, but with a lynx dangle. It's not bad, but on the upside, it's something unique in concept. So I'll give it a few points. There are better options though. I wanted to like this one more, okay? It looks a lot like a one higher up on the list, but this one just has a fat back 
which makes it just look off to me. Long hair, nothing more, nothing less. I'm conflicted on the weirdly upkempt hairstyle for orcs. Hey, without the bun, this looks a little bit more orcish, if you know what I mean. At this point, just let that hair loose, my guy. Hey, now it's just begging for its freedom. This looks strangely like Ray after she went through a wood chipper. This one is begging for me to like it more, but what is happening with this weird balcony-like thing, dude? This doesn't look natural. Just the feathers isn't bad, but I feel like it's missing the largest point of the styles with the Argonians if you can see what I mean. Hey, this one's fun. I like the rings, but the little doodle doo on the top is kind of distracting more than cool for me. The most common hairstyle for an elf, a lion's mane but tamed down, which would suck more if the facial hair didn't fix it. I'm giving it a lot of extra points for how awesome it looks with the beard. I know I'm a sucker for braids in Skyrim, but too many is a thing. And they all have rings, what? That's pretty Pretty Khajiit though, so it works pretty good, but <laughs> the classic bandit mohawk, just this cool on an elf. But I feel like it's missing something. Found what it needed, yes. But you can't get the braid on an elf? That's not fair, come on. This one would be so perfect if it wasn't for this middle dude. I hate the skin line, it looks so off, but a lot better on an elf, so I guess that gets it a little higher. The slightly different bandit-like hair for your elf. Okay, I'm more fond of this than I know some of you are. Opinions are fun. Short hair, but rocking the Vegeta hairline. It looks a little silly on a Nord, but it looks amazing on an elf again. Oh boy, we got the classic slick back, baby. Calm down on the gel though, my guy. The freaking balcony is back, but shorter with earrings. So overall, a better style. I like this one a lot more. See, that's a good middle ground. You have the feathers, but you have a little reptilian flair. This one is only for red guards. I think it's awesome, but what if? Oh, that's it, baby. Dragonborn Afro, just what it needed. If you jump scare this guy, you're losing a freaking eye. My gosh, that is too many. It's kind of cool in a metal sort of way, but oh my gosh, dude, trim down a little. This is the slick back with the Aragorn bangs. That works pretty great. This one is great, unique and pretty awesome. Only works for an elf, but that's unique at least. Slick back, but with a twist. Oh yeah, we got some action in the back. <laughs> I really like this one. This just screams the Elder Scrolls elves, man. It's so iconic, I had to put it so high on the list for my sanity. And 2020 has taken that away pretty quickly. Hey, it's the Lynx Dangle, but with earrings. Awesome, man, some unique for the kitty cats. Why did I write that? I like this one a lot. The curled horns and the feathers look pretty iconically Argonian to me. Oh yes, the feathers work so good with these horns, dude. It just looks freaking awesome. This is what the last ones needed. That's why I put them pretty low. Bedhead, but in the sexy kind of way. Spike Mohawk, baby, that's what's up. One of, if not the most iconic orc style. It's just great. This one looks super cool. An amazingly simple hairstyle with no rings if that isn't your cup of tea. Mohawk with earrings on talking cats. Now we are getting to the best ones. This is basically the Aragorn I mentioned earlier. Oh yeah, the Aragorn, but with a braid. Now this is what I want from my unique bandits. This style in a mohawk looks freaking dope, dude. Red guard and orcs only, which makes this a great choice for those races. Hair with the side braids. You know I love it, man. This one looks pretty neat. It's very simple, but a good mix of upkempt and orc-like. Now we have the same style, but leaning more towards bandits. Bandit. Pretty dope. And now we have the same style but leaning more towards upkempt. Pretty dope. Here's a red guard only hair, and this is great. I love the unique look compared to basically every other hair in the game. This one looks really awesome. I especially love it with white. The side braids are just amazing. This is top tier, man. Oh yes, this is what I call unique orc hairstyle. Fantastic all around, I would say. Just as awesome on a red guard. Now this is the hairstyle I love on orcs. The shaved sides are where it's at, man. The longer style looks good, but not as good as the medium style one. Here's the medium style one I mentioned earlier. I don't know, man, this is the same style from earlier, 
but it stands out so much more because it feels uniquely Tamriel. Take one of those braids and move it back. Wow, man, this looks cool. The ideal Khajiit hairstyle for me. Yeah, I love this one. Not too long and the sides are super unique. Going into a ponytail. This is totally my own opinion, of course, but I think this is the perfect hairstyle in this game. It just makes sense for a warrior to keep their hair up, but also have a unique kind of style to it. This is the perfect epitome of male hairstyles. We did the males. Okay, I already used that joke. Anyway, before we get started, I want to give the same notes I gave in part one. The color will vary throughout the video to make it easier to see the details of the hair or to improve the look of the hair all around. Or hair styles can be very similar, so those may be bundled close together. Multi-raced haircuts will be counted as one. Also, no bald or peach fuzz because there's, there's what can I, nothing to say. There is no style, there is no hair. And lastly, these are my opinions. If you love a hair style I rank very low, that's perfectly fine. Just please remember this is hair. I swear I don't mean any harm whatsoever. So let's get into wasting our time, shall we? I can kind of see what this is supposed to be, but this looks so stupid and even worse from certain angles. And what are these grapes? I'm sorry, Terry. I like you, but this looks like she's gonna try to sell me some Nutter Butters. But you know, she's in a, you know, an adult. This looks dumb. It does not look natural at all how it's just like floating here and like stuck on the top of the head like a Lego. This looks slightly better than the one with the long hair because I think the extra hair just makes it look even stupider. Don't take that as a compliment. It still looks like your barber had a psychological episode during your cut. Argonian get weird styles dude this looks dumb man the middle horn looks so wrong <laughs> this is slick back like it's going to go somewhere but it just doesn't Ugh! this is the definition of perspective matters from the front it's okay but from this side it looks so weird and I feel this would look even stupider running and jumping around and it's just remaining stationary at this weird angle Ugh. I do kind of like the unique cloth on the back of the head, but the straight spike just feels more distracting than anything, like an upside down unicorn. And the opposite facing spikes also look just so dumb. Ew, okay. This one would be awesome if she had more hair. Like there is no hair, only these braids poking out from her scalp like an orc in the back of the head. This is just so off-putting. Okay, this one is just way too busy. Like four long braids on the sides, all too long, straight hair underneath. The worst offender is from the front looking like a frog underneath the water. I'm not a fan. This looks more like a kind old woman who was gonna offer me cookies than a dragon slaying chosen one. This looks like it's made of wheat. This looks wrong and so unnatural and don't get me started on the freaking tumbleweed. What? Just curled horns. <sighs> This one just looks weird. I don't know what's supposed to be going on back there, man. It looks like she got in a fight with a dog and it took half of her hair with it. This is the weird dog one, but with rings. Cool. The links dangle that the male has, has returned. But there's no rings or nothing. It's just the dangles. So it's super boring and empty to me. Like there's not even an option for hair with the dangle. Super disappointing. See, this one could be better. Don't get me wrong. I know what it's going for. But from the front, this looks just like she's wearing a freaking hood. Look, it looks like she's wearing a hood. This would look better if it wasn't for the Play-Doh snakes. So, eh. Where is it? Where is it? Ah, there it is. Found it. Finally. The definition for boredom. Oh, sweet. It also comes with a picture. On a guy, this would be the most generic thing in the world, but it's not too bad on a girl. However, this looks like teeth, so it's weirding me out. Okay, next please. This wouldn't be so bad, but this is so tall, it looks like she's hiding a hidden dagger in there. What? Just horns. What do you want me to say? Not too good, not too bad. These haircuts are the ones that make me wonder why I decided to do this to myself. This isn't bad, at least it isn't freaking crooked. This one looks like that one Pokemon. That's not a compliment, this looks wrong. The Pokemon one, but with a dangle. With all the uncertainties in life, it eases my mind knowing that the stupid perm is back. But this raises the same question. How'd this happen? Perms don't exist yet. I would hate this much more if it didn't have the cool dangle, man. This is unique at least. Why, Bethesda? You get Give us the feathers, but you take away the dangle? 
This is the boring section, so the funny will continue when the funny can. Forgive me, there's not much to say on some of these middle haircuts. I mean, it's long hair. What else do you want me to say? Horn Mohawk, baby, let's go! Life is pain, for many reasons, but right this second it's because we were robbed of the potential of possibly one of the greatest haircuts because of this. What? Why is it so big and poking out so far? This looks so weird! Bandit Mohawk is a Bandit Mohawk, but you can't remove the braid like you can for the male, so I'm kind of mad about that. I need to re like my, my priorities. See? This is like the perspective one, but it's straight. Looks like it should be. And voila, it looks way better. Just makes me confused on why that other one even exists. Not bad, but I fell asleep halfway through that sentence. Hey, the banana turned into a donut. Is it jelly filled? That was stupid, I'm sorry. I mocked one earlier for the weird braid, but this looks better with the rings and such. The good classic elf. I like this one, but not much really to say. It's just the classic elf. It's good. I like it. Hey, we're finally into the good section. Hella friggin' Louia. This looks even cooler than the one on top of the head. Strange how good these look on females, I never would have guessed that, but they look good. This is also really good. No rings, no braids, just a classic style. Sometimes that's all you need. Some people don't like all those other accessories, so this is a good example for that. Standard haircut, but with small rings. Cool! I wanted to put this higher, but the one braid on the back looks more strange than anything, I guess. It's still pretty good though. This is basically just the generic style for an orc. It's pretty good all around. No downsides, nothing too unique, but it still looks good. This one's pretty good. I really enjoy the pullback on the sides into the ponytail. It really looks cool. It looks better on a male, but it looks pretty good here too. This would be great, but the bangs just don't seem natural. They kind of look like they're glued on. That's the only downside. Why couldn't the males get something like this, man? Two large spikes and two small spikes. This just looks dope. Yes, yes, yes. I love feathers on Argonians, and this is definitely a look man. The feathers are back, and I like the middle horns more especially. This was close because I like both of the Argonian haircuts I just mentioned, but this one just is just top tier for Argonians, dude. Rings, rings, rings. Even Sonic would have a stroke from the, how many rings there are, man. Jeez. Whoa, whoa, what? Other races other than Red Guards and Orcs can get this style on females? This looks awesome. Why can't my Nord dude get this? On males, this is only available for Red Guards and Orcs. I, I like this one, okay? I really enjoy how the bangs are longer than the rest of the hair. It's unique at least. Very tomboy. Which fits, because I don't see a slayer of dragons and the savior of the world settling down as a house maiden, if you know what I mean. Hey, this one is also super unique. The long ponytail with the super cool jewelry. This is a winner when compared to this. Classic female warrior hairstyle, but with the avatar bang. You could open a can of SpaghettiOs with those, dude. <laughs> a more fancy style that makes me think back to the weird styles that the males had. I didn't like those on males, but this explains why I didn't. It wasn't meant for the dudes. It looks good here, though. I never thought I would ever say this. And I'm scared too, but oh braids makes this look better. What is happening to me? Why did I say that? This looks dope though. Oh wow, o okay game, you make zero sense. Humans have to have the braid, but elves can remove it? What's the point? This still looks awesome in this really cool band and mohawk design. This weird decisions, dude. Yes, I love this. Slick back horns with the awesome unique trinkets. Easily the best Argonian style for me. The braid is back, but we have a lot of them. This looks so Khajiit though, man. This is the definition of Khajiit. This one is so much better than the male counterpart because of one reason. No skid mark. Without the skin right down the middle, this looks pretty freaking sweet. This is the classic style I love, but with a braid. I might have a weird obsession with braids, okay? I get it. But you can't deny it looks really cool in this setting. This, okay, this is what that monstrous abomination of hair should have been. It's not too busy, but with a good mix of braids and straight hair. Overall, I love this one. Another banger dude rocking the Princess Leia. Well, a version of the Princess Leia at least. I might be alone on this, but I love the solo shaved side. I think it looks very bandit-like and just very awesome and unique for the female haircuts. And just like the male counterpart, this is awesome. The side braids go so good with the white color and the long hair underneath. Why am I getting so excited? I need to go lay down or something. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. Here is where personal opinion becomes very obvious because this one is super boring, but it's my kind of super boring because I freaking love this style. It's simple, it looks 
good, don't judge me. Just like the males, the shaved sides fit the orcs so pin perfectly, it's amazing. Long hair is even better. Think it's because it's more feminine? Not sure, but this is the second best hairstyle in the game, and surprisingly enough, it belongs to orcs. Perfection. That's right, I said it, and I don't care who hears me. I'll just yell it from the ceiling tops if I have to. Side braids with normal bangs, that's right. The ponytail isn't doing this. This just makes sense. Medieval flair, but still feminine. It's perfect. Okay, okay. How about we get back to a ranking that is actually helpful? Uh, I mean, kind of. If you trust a man who spends countless hours ranking freaking hairstyles. Anyways, welcome to Skyrim Summons Ranked Worst to best. And by summons, of course, I mean conjuration. It's a spell tree in Skyrim, trust me, I have proof, look. There are a large amount of these, and several people have recommended this, so let's get to it already. As with every official list that I'm sure will be seen as objective fact, I need to lay out a few notes before we actually hop into the list. We are ranking these guys on, of course, their combat ability first and foremost. To do this, I'm going to be pitting each one of them against a standard troll, like a weird ancestral Pokemon. Now the troll itself is a little bit weak to fire, so some of the summons will be more or less effective because of this, so I am taking that into account with each of them. Trolls also slowly regenerate their health, so yeah, that's a thing too. And other than combat ability, I am taking all the summons designs into consideration. The way these dudes look is pretty important, I think, so that's gonna be considered as well. And lastly, these are all conjuration summons. But there are three non-conjuration summons I'm gonna note really fast. Those are the two dragons and Call Valor. Because, well, they are summoned by shouts and not spells. They are all great for the most part. Part. The dragons are fantastic in large outdoor fights because, well, you can only use them outdoors, but still. And lastly, Call Valor is really good for non-conjuration builds in indoor areas like dungeons and stuff like that. So yeah, that's those three out of the way. Oh yeah, lastly, no zombies or horses because one's for riding and the other has far too many variables to rank consistently. Alrighty then, let's get this started with the worst summon. A large part of me feels really, really bad for putting this pupper as last on the list. The little guy is as iconic as any of these guys come. He is all of our first one. He was our original one. But in the grand scheme, he's just a ghost wolf, which is kind of neat. Yeah, he looks cool enough, but also as much as he tried his little heart out, he couldn't even last one hit. Poor feller. I love you so much, but man, you're so bad in combat. Bone man. Okay, in terms of design, I say this guy looks pretty decent. A skeletal archer consumed with arcane energy overflowing through the eyes. It's pretty cool. But in terms of combat, no matter how many shots he landed in the troll's eyes, he only lasted a couple hits until he piffled out. So not too good in the end, sorry old buddy. The Mist Man may take the reward for the dumbest looking summon in the game. No, 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 actually, you know, he does take the reward for the dumbest looking summon in the game. So congrats, man, I knew you could do it. It looks so dumb. It's just a skeletal model where they deleted the legs. It looks so wrong to me with all the weird stuff going on down here too. Yeah. Okay, in combat, they can pick up dead enemies' weapons, but how is that gonna be possible when the rest of it ain't that good? Because other than that, they just use frost spells, which can be useful for depleting stamina, that's for sure, but overall, I would say this one is less than average for sure, yeah, not that great. Alright, time for the flaming familiar, an all around better version of the world's best ghosto. First, the design is the original, but cooler, with a nice line of fire right down the spine for extra flair. Now, he's a gimmick though. What do I mean by that? Well, he's a friggin' ticker from Gears of War, runs up, takes a big bite out of that booty then boom 
Just against a troll, the damage is admirable, okay, but in a group of enemies is when this thing becomes way more dangerous. I think this one is okay. Fun for sure, which gives it a lot of points. It's very unique and very fun to use. The Unbound Daedra is a good name because this thing is a loose freaking cannon. It cannot be contained. It will attack anything, including the caster. So I don't like it right off the back. But other than that, it's important to note, its design is awesome. That being the standard Daedra clattered in Daedric armor. Combat wise, he's really bad. For you, because he's really good. <laughs> a mud crab interrupted a duel of a century, but he murdered both of them no problem. Then my man came at me, so yeah, that sucks. Probably good in a large pack where he can just focus on other enemies, but I can't overlook the fact that after a hard fought victory, you have to put your creation out of its misery or it will try to do the same to you. A lot of points lost because of that. Big cold golem boy. He looks great. A little odd in the face area for me but the huge hammer and the huge spike are awesome. Not as iconic as some of the other Atronox, but still I think he looks really cool. Now his damage may not be the greatest in the world, but this guy can take more damage than a professional boxer. He even has a large AoE attack that slows enemies, and he's really good at slowing enemies because, well, he's freaking frost. So I say he's better than average, but only by a little. A good meat puppet though, that's for sure. Also with frost thrall, he can be a permanent follower, so that's a good note I guess. Say hello to the only summon in the game that actually has a backstory. Arniel's Shade is where you summon, oh well Arniel, a character from the College of Winterhold. Basically my man was looking into things no man should look into and kinda got teleported to an unknown dimension or or state of life, we don't really know, he just kind of not sure, but it definitely makes him really unique, which that is his redeeming factor because in combat he's okay. Not horrible, but not amazing. Just kind of like an Atronach. Atronach? I cannot say that word. If I missay that word, I'm sorry. Average is a good word to explain his combat ability. Overall, he's pretty okayishly good. The uniqueness really gave him a lot of points because of the backstory for sure. Oh, Ash Guardian, you had to be a unique butterfly, didn't you? Okay, first off, this guy is a force of nature, freaking murdering the troll like he was a cockroach. Its design is also incredible, being a storm Atronach model, but covered in sand. But you may note that it seeks the death of its master. That's because it requires you to have a heartstone on you or it attacks everything including you. The heartstone makes it where it only attacks the enemies. So if you don't have a heartstone, this thing will murder you most likely. So yeah, it is kind of great in combat, but I'm knocking off points because of the danger it provides to players who don't know this mechanic. Okay, the ash spawn looks freaking awesome. Let's get that out of the way right now. Some could say he looks kind of derpy, which I can agree with on some levels. He does have the same expression as Mega Man when he jumps, but overall super unique design for sure. For combat, he wields a fire sword and combustion spell, so he's just wrecking this troll dude. This one is definitely great overall. Amazing in combat, varied abilities to use, and a really cool look. Wrathman may sound like an edgy 13 year old superhero OC, but in Skyrim at least, he's amazing. The design takes notes from the Mist Man and the Bone Man, but but way cooler. Armor and actual flesh. That sounded sounded weird leaving my mouth. Anyways, he is better than average at combat, easily. Not the top of the top, but definitely admirable and a good partner to have with by your side for sure. I mean, he killed the troll pretty quickly enough, I would say. He is a great partner overall. Flame Atronach, Atronach, I hate that word. Time for this one, baby. She is arguably the most iconic summon in the game, design-wise at least. Legit one of the coolest designs in all of Skyrim, in my opinion. Just look, she looks freaking awesome, dude. Combat-wise, she is a little bit stronger than usual here because, well, she's using fire and the troll, like I mentioned, but still, an incredible attack rate with these fireballs. And the flare of several animations for sure makes this easily one of my favorites. It can 
can also be permanent with the flame thrall ability so that's awesome it's iconic for a reason man this poor guy is running from this fetish creature dude now if you threw this summon lower on your list i would completely understand because honestly the wrath man is probably way better in combat but in terms of design i love the flame etronach that much in terms of design while we're on the subject the seeker is also one of my favorites no doubt i love horror with a passion and this thing looks straight out of an hp lovecraft book i love it so much dude the troll took one look at this thing and ran for the freaking hills, but my man sniped him no problem. In combat, it has two abilities. One big slow bomb and one straight up dart that does a lot of damage. Overall, fantastic for me. An ugly stepchild of the flame Atronach. Better in combat, but still a great design. So yeah. Dragon Priest looks as awesome as I remember, man. I mean, it is a spectral form when you summon it, which does lower it a little bit because you kind of miss some of the details at certain angles, but still a super unique and awesome design overall. Now, for some reason, this troll wanted some Dragonborn booty because it attacked me, but still, it's a freaking Dragon Priest. It's amazing in combat, no doubt. Mainly Frost Spells, definitely an amazing summon for sure. I mean, a Dragon Priest by your side, that sent it itself is awesome dude you are not gonna go wrong if you choose the dragon priest say hello to the frost atronach but better <laughs> it's true though he looks super cool like a thunderstorm isolated in one entity so design is fantastic and come on man in combat this guy wrecks shop the troll looks like a little baby trying to stand up to this thing and on top of that he is permanent with the storm thrall ability freaking fantastic no doubt in my mind friends first off i don't know why the dramora lord is nude in my game i don't know man maybe i caught him in the middle of a shower or something i don't know but ignoring that his design is the same as the unbound dramora he's also as cold-blooded as balls freaking ruining the troll no problem killing it faster than any other thing bar none now do you see why the unbound dramora is low this dude is him but much much better now it is fire so the troll is weak to it but still this guy is a force of freaking nature no matter what the best in the game for me at least howdy and beards ranked baby <laughs> i bet you thought i was joking in my last rankings i wasn't see i've been growing this out for a while now just for this video and uh joy oh joy it turned out looking like joe dirt so pretty good success overall, I'd say. Can I please shave this off now? We did a helpful ranking, so I think the only way to counter that is with a worthless one, right guys? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I make great decisions for my channel. Anyways, we are ranking Skyrim Beards worst to best, but same notes are applied here as they were in the hairstyles ranking. So yeah, uh, link in the description for those if you haven't seen them, by the way. Anyways, some races have the same options as every other race, like elves, orcs, and humans. So those will be bundled together as one entry. So I'll be showing the race. I think the beards look uh, best on I guess using wood elves and nords as the base so yeah we won't be seeing much of orcs because it's hard to really tell these styles on them even though they have all the exact same styles as the humans and elves it's just easier to see the details on the standard races oh and uh I didn't forget Argonian they just don't have any beards don't worry guys I am already writing a letter to Bethesda I got it oh yeah also these are a uh, one 100% my opinion. If you disagree, that's fine, my dude, because this is freaking beards, so I don't think anyone is gonna try to burn me at the stake. Oh, and uh, lastly, uh, no bald or five o'clock shadow, because uh, honestly, what do you want me to say? All right, so without further ado, let's get into Skyrim beards ranked worst to best. Saying that out loud just makes me realize uh, that I'm spending my time on Earth very wisely. <laughs> Okay, okay. This is the definition of pedo stash. No one ever chooses to have this. It's 
especially when you have so, so, so many better options. We went from Pedo to Pedro, and it's still not good. Nothing left to say, really. Next. Ugly, ugly, ugly neck beard. He didn't even kinda grow it out to look a little like a beard. It's just spotty tufts of hair. It's just, ugh, bad, bad, bad. Just go with the five o'clock shadow for this kind of look. This one is a little better than the last one because it's a little more filled out but still not good. Dude, just shave the neck and you at least got a solid chin strap, you stupid. No, 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 we don't do that with our hair, man. We don't cut the middle and the top and call it a day. This is not what we do unless we are at gunpoint. <laughs> Okay, this is a fanboy of Wolverine who wanted to cosplay him but couldn't properly grow out the style. It just looks so plain and just incomplete. Uh, this one looks like a member of a cult. I mean, there are much worse as you've seen, but this is definitely not a good. <laughs> I think the fact that it's missing this strap right here and some fuzz here is what throws it off for me. This one looks like a guy from Jersey, like a guy who'd hit on your girlfriend right in front of you. Yeah, it doesn't fit the aesthetic to me. I could see this on a mage of some sort, but still. Ice, ice, baby. <laughs> yeah, that's the only reason this one is higher on the list, because uh, it reminds me of Vanilla Ice, which makes me think of JonTron, so I laugh. Good on ya. But this does look slightly better on an elf. A chin tuffle. Goatee, if you will. This just looks like a bard to me. But I could see someone using this, so it's not straight bad, like the ones before this. So we are getting better. That's a good sign, I guess. You know, at least this has a purpose. Hey, the fanboy could actually grow it out a little more. Dope, dope, dope. Still off, though. So go home and try again in a few years when puberty has fully finished. <laughs> this one's okay. I know it's just a less hair version of another one you will be seeing in a second, but when it's so little hair, it's just stubble. It's just too subtle for the style. This one is, eh, boring. And off looking with no sideburns or mustache. Just looks like a background character. What else can I say? This is the boring section if you can't really tell. Austin 316, cause Stone Cold said so. That's literally the first thing that came to my mind with this one. But when it's not attached, to a legend of a man, it's not great. Eh, okay, this looks like a 90s villain from an action movie. Know what I mean? I can just imagine him saying, you cannot stop it, Mr. Jones. This runs much deeper than you could ever imagine. It's fine, I guess. This is the standard I've been too busy to shave for the past few days. I think a good mid-range one. Not bad, not great, but shape up, man, shave that. Gonna be hard to impress Sondes Drenum with that laziness. This one is the same as the last one, but I like it a little bit more because it seems a little bit more deliberate. With a bigger focus on the mustache area, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Just a long goatee. It looks worse than the other ones because it's nothing special, like no style or anything, but it looks pretty cool on an elf, so that's bonus points for sure. See, this is an example of a mustache that can work for a warrior. Way better than freaking Pedro Pedo, whatever, still. This is the same as the last one, but better. It's thicker. Looks pretty good if you ask me. Well, mustache wise at least. But come on, there's no way it can get even thicker? I have literally sat here for 10 minutes thinking of what to say with this one. I mean, it's basically the most generic facial hair you could ever imagine. Not bad, that's for sure, but uh, nothing special. Overall, pretty decent. Let's, let's just move on, okay? This is the last one, but thicker and a very slight different style. I do enjoy it more than the last one, but again, staring at a Word document trying to think of something clever, so don't cold again. Next. <laughs> Finally. Uh, it's just a thicker version of the last one again. It's better, I guess. Just let's move on. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. I can actually say something here. I do enjoy how this one has a slightly changed style with a slightly more uh, downward momentum. I do enjoy this one more than the triple trio of boringness. Yeah, at first glance, this one is pretty good, but it's a worse version of the next one on the list. This one looks much better on an elf than a human, that's why, hence, I am showing it on an elf. Makes you look like a forest archer. So yeah, this facial hair option in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim is not bad. Not nauseating like this. 
Yep, this is the one from earlier, but it's a little bit fuller. I love this style on a barbarian class, but I don't think it can get any better, right? Oh, it can. <laughs> Fill out that stash, man, dude. Yeah, do it. This one lends itself well to my heritage. <laughs> Look straight out of an old western. Definitely fits any blacksmith character. But I must say, this one is where the real 10 gallon hats live. Round it down, boys. When this man walks into a town, time freezes as it witnesses this exquisite manhood of facial hair. The hipster, the art student, take your pick. Looks pretty good in my opinion. Too much bald area around here to consider it among the great, but still it's all right. Hey, 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 the Khajiit actually exists on this list. I know, right guys? They don't have many options and this one is just whiskers, so it's the lowest for them, but even their worst is this high up and better than all the ones ones before it, so that should tell you something at least. This is pretty similar to an earlier one, but on an elf, it straight up looks awesome, like a Robin Hood character. Why does Robin Hood always make me think of Shrek? Not ashamed, I love that movie, not ironically even. This looks weird without the sign burns, but that's because it's not meant for a human, it's meant for an orc. Yeah, this looks amazing, man. Easily the best for an orc dude. This one looks like if a green arrow decided to stop trimming his beard. I think this is for an archer, so naturally it looks awesome for that kind of character. And again, this one does look also pretty good on an orc. Take those whiskers and throw some jewelry on them and suddenly it's amazing. Such, such, such a fantastic style for a thief type character. I adore this simple style so much, man. Not much detail, but it still looks good. The classic full beard. Just a thick full beard, man. Nothing more to say. Nothing more, nothing less. Fantastic. Knotted goatee. Looks just as amazing on an elf as it does on a human. Overall, it's really great. I just want to know how he tied it because uh, this guy's arms are so beefcake, he probably can't even clap. Fly, you fools. Oh, uh, I mean, you shall not pass. And, uh, Samwise Genji. Yeah, I love Lord of the Rings. Oh, oh yeah, this one's dope too. Finally, Logan has landed. This is the Wolverine through and through, and I love it, man. Some of you probably don't like it because, hey, we all have different opinions, and sometimes those opinions are wrong. This is dope. Classic beard, but with the wizard dangle. Pretty awesome all around, I would say. Amazing for a battle mage kind of character. Finally, getting into the top quality best of the best facial hair, my friends. I never thought I would say that sentence in my entire life. And this and the next two are amazing on every single race, especially orcs again. This, these will just work so good for orcs. Same as the last one, but with a bundle at the bottom. Again, this is a great style, but this one leans a little bit more towards a viking aesthetic. Love it. Same as the last one, but in a ponytail thing and a slightly more taking care of style. Again, just an amazing style for a wizard type of character, but it is giving me vibes of a uh, Chad Thundercock. <laughs> you know what I mean? Thick. This boy, thick. So thick, if you stuck a stick in it, it would probably be lost forever in the void. And on an orc, don't get me started. On an orc, please, boy. Ah, yes, the warrior Khajiit style. I love this man. Such a simple yet effective style. But what if... Oh, 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 oh I felt a tingle. There is a braid, finally. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the stuff, baby. Best in the biz. Hey, man. Thanks for watching my video. I really appreciate it. See, uh, this video was a long time coming. See, it's been like four months since I've done an official like hair ranking video. So this was a very long time in the making, you know what I'm saying? I can't believe that like it took me this long to actually make it. Today we are ranking Skyrim armor sets worst to best. This is what you guys have been suggesting for some time now. So I thought, hey, why not? When venturing the land of Tamriel, you want to make all the peasants shake in their boots with jealousy, don't you? No? J just me? Okay. Let's put my ego to the side to go over some notes. I got them. First off, these are purely based on the visual design of the armor. We aren't going to be looking at any numbers because then it's just going to be this. Uh, hey guys, uh, yeah, the steel is better than the iron armor, 
and uh, yeah, the ebony is better than the steel armor. We don't want any of that. It's all about Elder Fashion 5 Scout Pimp. I hate myself for saying that. Next, these will be displayed on the base boy himself, the Nord. Male and female. Yep, got footage of both with every single armor set. I am tired. And also, some sets have different variants, like fur armor. So I'll just choose the one I think looks the best, and we are going to roll with that, alright? And lastly, of course, these are my opinion. If you disagree with any of these rankings, that's fine, my man. I promise you are good. It's just armor sets. Sets. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the worst armor. Okay, okay, okay. I know this one is kind of iconic to the series, but it's just not good, that's for sure. It's just so plain. The hide armor makes me feel like I'm falling asleep right now looking at the dang thing. We have also seen this so many times because you bandits wear this exact lost, armor as common as I kill Heimsker, and let me tell you, I did it twice in this sentence. The only thing the chest will protect this guy from is a single arrow right here, and on the female it's the opposite. The shield looks like it has a skin disorder and the helmet. Next. Gosh dang, I'm on the verge of kind of liking the Forsworn armor. I really am. On a Barbarian, it would look cool, but I really, really, really don't like the helmet. And realistically, the human skulls you have tied around you would make it really hard to order a sweet roll anywhere. And on a female, uh, this needs to be blurred. A little more. There we go. The helmet again is garbage, even on a female, and the rest is just so bland. I'm not a fan of this one. <laughs> Okay, this guy looks like he's on his way to a fun party. Not one I would ever even think of going to, but still, we all have our kinks and this guy's not ashamed of his. But still, it shows so, so, so much skin. I don't think my character is okay at all with this. And on a female, I think it's better, but not by much. I think it's just the fact that I hate seeing the dude's happy trail leading to the party zone. Give me a B? Give me an O, this one's not very good. This armor is one of the first things we see in Skyrim, so it is also iconic, but it's just brown, man. The helmet makes it look like he's asking me to go through the screen and help him in his situation. And this shield went to Google Images and looked up generic as ball shield and decided to use that as a role model. Better on a female, I think, but still, brown, Yeah. Okay, you may want to throw me down a cliff for not having this as the worst because most people probably think this is the worst in the entire game and I do agree with them on some levels this guy looks really weird man way 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 too much hairy man leg for me but the chest actually isn't bad in some areas and the female design is literally a completely different set and this is much better I think the whole arm sleeve and helmet is so freaking cool the antlers are dope she saved a lot of points for this one that that's for sure. <laughs> Okay, there is simplistic, then there is just this straight up derpy looking dude. I love the Dawn Guard as much as the next guy, but this is so, so, so simple. I literally checked my inventory to make sure this was it, and yeah, this is it. Better on a female for the sleeves they get, but still, <laughs> no. The scaled armor isn't downright offensive like some of the others with how bad it is or anything, it's just uninspired. The bottom half started off with something really good and then the top decided just to give up. The helmet is identical to another one you just seen a minute ago except they just decided to throw horns on it. At least this part will be safe like always, that's a good sign. Pentius Oculatus armor set. Now other than having a name that is really awkward to say or especially read that was my 12th take, this armor is pretty forgettable. I'm not a fan of all this man meat I'm seeing down here. And the helmet looks like he's ready ready to rough someone up with a good old round of British football. And the belt is, is it, the belt's just circles. I do really like the overall color design, but still snore. This may fit the setting of a cold, frigid wilderness that Skyrim is, but as a set, I think there is definitely areas that can be improved.
move. The hood looks weird. The whole neck shoulder area just doesn't look quite right. The textures also seem a bit low quality compared to most of the other armors. I don't know, man. Just the textures seem like they didn't have as much work put into them. This one is also a uh, very, very boring, so let's just move on. This one is very similar to the most iconic armor in the entire game, but it is not that iconic armor, so overall it's boring as balls. Now my queen, my queen, my lovely queen Lydia may sport this set, but I'm sorry, it's just the most generic armor in the world. The Dragonborn would not stand out in the middle of an army when you're wearing this, and that is not what we are looking for in these rankings. Shield generic, so there's one last kick while you're down. Oh, I'm sorry, did I wake you up from your little nappy? The shrouded armor is way too tight. I wouldn't want to imagine the state of his uh, joints. The helmet is a, is just, just a hood. But yeah, man, this dude is vacuum sealed in there. But on a female, it is oh so much better. She gets a satchel, of a, a freaking satchel. And and a freaking mask and she doesn't look like she's having a hard time breathing leather armor time very original name <sighs> <sighs> this is the breast of the brown squad. That's something, I guess. That didn't sound right. Whatever. Okay, this one isn't too bad. It at least looks like armor and not whatever the heck this was supposed to be. I actually really like the shoulders and the belt. So yeah, it's definitely not great, but like I said, could have been worse. This looks off. First, I'm gonna lay out my positives with this one. I do enjoy the ancient aliens kind of feeling it gives off, and I love the color design, but still, Chitin heavy set. Hopefully I said that right. Just looks weird to me. I don't know, man. The helmet is just not Skyrim at all. And the chest and shoulders don't really look natural. Still, this one's just meh for me. Blackguard or um or this one or this one. They really like to go like crazy with using this exact same set, except you know, renaming it and changing the color slightly. But still, I think this one is just it's fine. It's not bad, not fantastic. Or anything basically looks like the average thief kind of thing it looks same on both genders so i guess that's kind of a positive but i've seen this a billion times everywhere man they reuse this set several times in the game except just rename it but i don't know what bethesda's gonna do 10 years after release of me complaining about it okay i know this one isn't bad or anything it's just again generic we are in the boring generic section can you tell yet it's the roman soldier basically which yeah that's neat but it's not really bombastic compared to so many of the others you're going to be seeing here later on in the rankings. It works on both genders, but on a guy, you get these thick shoulder pieces, so bonus points. I have always been a fan of the shield in particular, though. I don't know why. I just think it looks kind of neat. Don't hang me for putting this, you know, the elven set in the meh section, but I have never been a huge fan of the elven armor in this game. The shield is fine, I guess, but the rest is just so overdone. We get it. You like birds. Everything Thing is just feathers and the helmet is so dumb looking and I know it's meant to be on a high elf I get that if you disagree, that's fine, my friend. I'm just the dumb guy making a dumb video. Okay, I know the orcish set is meant for an orc. Wow, great observation, Longbrow. Great writing. You're doing great, man. Anyways, overall, I think this one is uh, its not bad. I think it's actually pretty good. The helmet is actually great. And also, the shoulder pieces aren't far behind in that regard. But the shield looks like more of a weapon than a defensive item. And also, the overall design is uh, kind of weird. I'm just not a big fan of green. The helmet. Okay, let's just get this out of the way right Right now. I used to be the adventure arrow to the knee, yada yada yada. I don't want to see a thousand comments about that. Yeah, this is a guard set we see everywhere all around Skyrim. Not a bad thing by any means. I actually love the cloak like feeling the chest piece gives off. The helmet though, 10 out of 10, very iconic. Next. The steel plate armor is way better than the standard plate armor with the fantastic helmet and gloves. I also love the patterning here. The overall design is nothing stand out, nothing crazy, but overall I say this is a pretty solid piece. It's, it's pretty good. But the female one has these weird twirly things right here, which is just a why, what, why? Say hello to Reflection Incarnate, except it also has a really, really stupid looking helmet. 
What is this? Goggles? You're fighting this thing. What are these goggles for? But other than that, only notable feature is really the color. And the color is kind of painful to me, at least. This is the last one, but better because there's no freaking goggles. And the shoulders are much better with the addition of fur. You know that uh, there's not much to say when I'm highlighting fur. The blacksmith next to me has probably smacked her finger a thousand times from the glare from these freaking things. I'm honestly just not a fan of how freaking neon it looks. Oh, the blades armor set. See, see, this one's actually very unique. Nothing's like it in the game. See, this one, um, the only way to get it is by spending several microtransactions and having to wait three days to unlock it. Oh, wait, wrong blades. We will get into that, trust me. I love the black color design, pure black. It looks really good. Just a harmless set. I do love the color style. It's simple, but I like how the simplicity and how good it is. I, this is a good set. With the glass set, you better watch your step because if you even nudge another person you're going to go to prison for assault my gosh man are you that afraid of other people i do really like the overall design and the style for sure the colors work great with each other and the shield is probably my favorite part of the entire you know set it's probably one of my favorite shields in the entire game leave it to a nord to go out naked and try to wrestle a bear to death it looks like he succeeded in that and that's just pure chat energy right there this is a good set overall don't get me wrong but i do believe it could be better and on a female a lady i think you missed a spot or like a lot of spots you realize skyrim is cold right you'll regret that fashion choice quick as balls i guarantee it. Ancient Falmer. This one overall is pretty good. It's very white, so I may blind people who have more sensitive eyes out there, but still, I enjoy the overall thing it's going for. Helmet looks a little kind of weird to me, and on a woman, it looks like she has a pudge belly that's hanging down with a bag belt. Talk about an armor that actually makes sense for the climate of Skyrim. The skull armor is pretty good. Very unique to much the standard armors of the game, as you have seen. Being the only set that looks comfy as balls to wear. So it makes me feel like I'm treating the dragonborn to a vacation when he's so used to wearing something he can't move in or this. Pure gold metal man. I like what this armor is going for, like a living robot. Like the massive boots, the derpy shield, and the helmet may look great on a girl, but on a guy, yeah, he looks like he's just seen pineapple on pizza. No offense. Next. Falmer hardened armor is not bad at all. I think it's actually pretty good. There are sections I enjoy a lot, like the crotch strap, I uh, I don't know what it's actually called. And the whole neck shoulder area is also fantastic. But the shoes look like some of Santa's elves. See, I want to love the wolf set much more. I want it to be top of the top, best in the biz. But I can't force myself to love this stupid helmet. Helmets make or break a lot of sets for sure for me, and this one is just painfully weak. I love the wolf jaw, but eh. The rest is pretty cool, and a great patterning all throughout. I love the gloves as Especially, but on a female it straight up looks like a friggin mummy. Okay, the Nordic carved armor is really good But just move the helmet farther down and the design is so much better But the rest of the armor is absolutely incredible with an incredible overall figure and like silhouette and a friggin ball and shield dude This shield is so cool looking. Oh my gosh, look at that This is the kind of armor that I'm sure would protect me when I see this start running towards me full speed now this 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 is a vampire slaying machine right here. Nothing like the please kill me now from earlier. I love, love, love the faded white color and the simple yet incredible helmet. On a female and male, this one is brutal and looks like it belongs on a battlefield. This looks straight up like a background character from any Star Wars movie. I really like this one, a full body coverage set of bug shells. And I love the aesthetic on a female, especially with the blood on the side here. Small details, man. It works. The shield sucks real bad, though. Mr. Iconic right here. I know some of you would put this much, much, much lower, but come on, man. It's the poster boy. This is the armor we think of when we think of the Dobakin. That was supposed to be Parthenax voice, but I really messed it up. Yeah, it's boring, and yeah, it's bland, but if I didn't put it up this high on the list, I would find myself losing sleep for unknown reasons, and I don't need to lose more sleep because I already only get about two hours. Yeah, this is a great one. If you stood in the way of this guy when he's walking down the street, I think your body would instinctively move out of the f 
way because look at the energy it exudes. Especially the shoulders and chest, it's so good. Dragon scale is overall again really really great. I love the shield so much and that's rare for me if you couldn't tell by now. I'm, I love this shield dude, it's probably my favorite in the game. I love the dark tone and the helmet is unique. And surprise, surprise, all these positives say equals something that is not garbage. However, if he dropped something and looked down, he would probably poke his eye out for sure. Monster Hunter, oh I mean bone mold. I don't even want to know how many animals he skinned and cleaned to get this set to look how it does, or even how that's possible, but still, this looks incredible. The helmet is a little wonky, let's all agree on that, but I mean, it looks straight out of an 80s sci-fi movie. The shield looks like a carapace, and I love of it again and the tattered wraps add so much to this it's so unique for it are any of us surprised that the daedric made it this far on the list man the color is my cup of tea with the dark black contrasted by a deep red the helmet is literally hiding your entire face in darkness i love it dude i'm edgy male and female both look absolutely phenomenal holy crap talk about a glow up for assassins the nightingale set is some of the dopest looking crap in this entire game we get a cape a freaking cape I'm already on board, and we still haven't got to the rest of the pieces. Helmet is so sick by hiding everything in deep shadow like the Daedric set did. The patterning all around here is just so good. This is what you want to wear when you kill some random traveling merchant you see on the side of the road. Oh yeah, baby. Time for the most iconic armor in this game, basically, other than the poster boy. This is straight up Black Knight medieval boss armor, and I adore it so much every last piece of the detail is nothing but amazing. I honestly have zero complaints about either the boy or the girl sets of the ebony armor. As you travel the lands of Skyrim, you will surely encounter frigid, cold, wild lands. Dark, cold caves where any creature of the night could be lurking just out of sight. And also the lonely office room because I am in here by myself recording a video at 2am on a Tuesday, like any responsible healthy adult would do. But after you experience those horrors, you may find yourself in need of a warm fire, a cold glass of mead, and welcoming music. I am of course talking about the many taverns and inns that are scattered across the land of Tamriel. But you surely want to have a good experience, right? Seeing that Skyrim probably doesn't have a form of Yelp, you may end up in a place like this that is actually full of evil vampires who exploit skooma addicts to consume their blood. I am assuming you wouldn't want that. So your local internet funny man is here to rank them for you from worst to best. And in order to do this, I had a criteria for each one of them to follow. I'll be going over these in a roundabout order, but they include the design. Next, the location, because do you really want to stay in a place like my lonely office? And also lore, kind of. You know, the backstory, significance, story to the place, stuff like that, you know. And also features such as music, food, comfort, Company, you know, the people who will be staying with you, etc. We aren't including quests you can get there because then it will be heavily one-sided to some, you know what I mean? And also, almost every inn and tavern has food and a rentable room, so I'm not going to be just highlighting that for each one of them. The only time I will be highlighting that is when there's something unique about that aspect of it. So without further ado, time to lay our heads down and down a few pints in the tavern's ranked baby worst to best. Let's do this. Oh wait, there is an exception to this. The Stumbling Saber Cat is a tavern in a bandit fort with a unique saber cat mount on the wall. That's how it got its name. So it doesn't really count because it's not really an inn. It's just a set dressing. Let's get started. Hey there. <laughs> Do you want to die on the way to find a good ale? Then stop by none other than Nightgale Inn. The sign is simple, but not half bad actually. It fits the inside since uh, no one's freaking here. This place is lonely as balls, man. The story the story of it is kind of sweet, I guess, you know, just the guy's grandpa built it so it runs in his family and he just kind of inherited it. But your family line will surely end by visiting here because, oh, uh, just, just look at it. It has a creepy basement too. There's literally nothing at all unique about this entire place other than that his grandpa built it. Welcome to literally the only open business in Winterhold. The Frozen Hearth is a sad little inn that depresses you just looking in its direction. This place also has shady dealings in the basement and stuff, so that's 
you know, that, that's kind of sketchy. This town is so sad that the Jarl will actually visit the inn because there is nothing else to do here other than the college. Now, I know the place looks big and stuff, but it's just a standard layout. It's boring as balls. Yeah, you will be hearing me say generic layout a lot. There is a set layout for most inns and taverns in the game, and a lot of them follow that. So just a fair warning, dude, it's going to be said a lot. Dead Man's Drink sounds like a friggin' pirate hangout, but it actually got its name because the town of Falkreath has the biggest cemetery in Skyrim. What a milestone. Their sign is boring as balls, so eh. Oh wait, that sentence wasn't even finished, sorry. I meant the whole place is boring as balls, so eh. It's the standard layout copy-paste that I mentioned a second ago. Nothing at all that makes it stand out. The definition of boring. Next. On to Dragon Bridge. Yeah, that awesome location. To the Four Shields Tavern. Starting with the sign, it doesn't really fit the aesthetic of Skyrim to me because it's colored in a weird way, but I'm sure it will get better because we're in Dragon Brid. Okay, okay, it has the <laughs> generic layout. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great idea for a video. It's totally not going to get repetitive at all. But the room you get is actually pretty large, so I guess that got it some bonus points. No one worth two pennies. Eh. More side. The, the sign makes me cry in my sleep. The story of this place doesn't quite add up. The owner says her and her brother turned just a random house into the tavern. But guess what? <laughs> Boom! Generic layout. <laughs> yeah, how would you do a generic layout? Cuts from a random house. Cool. I feel like my mind's going numb by writing this over and over again. I mean, it does have Lurbuck. I think that's how you say it. Who's the worst bard in all of Skyrim? So that's bonus points, honestly. The room you get is pretty big, too. <laughs> Next. Braidwood Inn is located in an out-of-the-way place, that being Kynesgrove. Just a mining town full of dirty old miners, so guess what your company is at the end? <laughs> Good guess. The design is neat, yeah, but generic, and has the same boring layout inside and out. The sign is neat enough, I guess, but still. Delphine does say this place serves a great dark ale, but that's coming from from Delphine, so who freaking cares? The music is unique though. It plays a different soundtrack compared to every other tavern in the game, so that got it a couple points. Overall, I'm just not great. Old Holden Inn, a cozy tavern next to a river in a mountain range. Would be better if it, uh, had actual life here. You know, like, you know, like living people. The sign looks straight out of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I'm sounding like my wife all of a sudden. The story is nice, though. See, Tiber Septum won a huge war around here and then slept in the very bed you can rent. And then when I was sitting in the room, a child offered me alcohol, so, uh... Okay, but it's the generic layout. <laughs> Frick. Okay, next. Frostfruit Inn. Cool name, cool sign. I think. And now that I'm looking at the sign longer, it's just a branch in a circle. Eh. <gasps> okay, the design. Give me a G, give me... Oh, come on, it's a standard layout. It's in Rorkstead, so I mean, it could be in a worse spot. I kind of have a soft spot for this place because of the song, you know? And the room you get is actually for two people, so that kind of blows. But see, this place does have Eric the Slayer, so I freaking love Eric the Slayer, man. I love this guy, seriously. So a good location. Uh, it has Eric the Slayer, which I really like this guy. I need enough sign, and uh, eh, you know, the rest is just kind of generic, though. Another generic one, baby. <laughs> Wind peak in. The sign is a mountain. The outside is generic. The inside is generic. The people are generic. The room you get is kind of bigger than normal, but still pretty generic. Okay, next. Velomir Inn. The sign literally just says the name with some doodles on the side. Boring, but effective. I'll give it that. J Nair? Ick. Are you surprised? Decent people, but other than that, you know everything else, man. It's the standard. Please give me more unique stuff to talk about. Give me the good stuff already. Time for the far less important tavern in Whiterun. The, uh, the, the, the other will be mentioned later. The Drunken Huntsman got its name when one of the owners shot the other one when they got drunk. Uh, don't worry, they're both still okay. One's pretty sour about it, though. That's kind of neat. The sign is boring. Time to go inside. Also neat. Wait, wait, it's not the generic layout, boy, yes! Wait, you can't even rent a room? This is bullshit! Oh cool, you can buy weapons. Yeah, this place had to be a special butterfly. Yeah, no rooms to rent, but they do sell weapons of death. Pretty cool place, I would say. A bad company other than Janessa, though. Next is Depression. I mean Oppression. Oh, I mean New Genesis Corner Club. This one is very, very unique. 
You can't rent a room here because, well, this place is a storytelling device. It's broken down. It looks like it's just thrown together and it's been weared and teared down by just age and not really taken care of at all. No sign, actually, other than just these torn banners. See, this is a refuge for the Dark Elves in Windhelm since, well, Thorncloaks don't really like Dark Elves much. So this is actually their sanctuary. It gets tons and tons of points for the story it has. People also say that they actually serve amazing drinks, so suck it, Ken. Candle Hearth, even though Candle Hearth is higher. Sleeping Giant Inn. Yup, this one has a huge impact on the story and, you know, the main mission as a whole. Because the owner of it is the woman who wants to kill Parthenax. So I hate this place. Next. Okay, okay, okay. This place is actually very unique because it has a hidden room with tons of unique things in it. Like an alchemy table, an enchanting table, and some storage for all your stuff. This is all good. So I gotta give it a lot of points for the specialty of it. Oh yeah, also generic layout. It has a porch though, so cool. Oh yeah, also the best sign in the game. No, genuinely, it has the best sign in the entire game. The Bee and Bar, probably my favorite name for any inn in the game. It has an awesome and unique sign that fits the location and everything perfectly. It's also owned by Argonians. That is also really cool, I love that part. The exterior design is a chill wood cabin, and it's also the central point of Riften, so its importance is a huge win too. The interior is just like a friggin' restaurant. This is all great, dude. I love this place. You can even get three unique drinks that you can only get here as well. But, 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 but. The room is a sad little corner though. So yeah, I lost a lot of points because just look at the room you get, dude. Do you want to feel like you're at a friend's house when his parents are arguing? Then go to Silver Blood Inn. There's a couple that works here that they fight all the freaking time, dude. It's owned by a rich family, which makes me want to support the mom and pop places elsewhere, but I can't deny that the rest is quality here. The sign is pretty okay, I think. It actually fits the location of Mark Hearth because it looks more like a mining sort of thing. The exterior is also just fantastic. Looking like it's built straight into a mountain. Fantastic both outside and now even inside. The inside is highly inspired by the Dwemer aesthetic. It's super unique. The only one in the game like this. It's also super busy too with tons of people. So overall this place is just great. But you have to sleep on a, a freaking stone. That's a huge turnoff dude. This is not a bed. It is a rock. The Winking Skeever is another iconic tavern located in Big Boy Town Solid. Attitude. The name came from the owner's old pet who would wink at him. It's weird, I know, but at least it has a story. Most of the games don't have anything like that. The sign reflects that story too. The place actually has, of course, a unique layout. Anything with a generic layout isn't going to be this high. So let's all cheer on three. One, two. <gasps> Its layout is super comfortable with nice focus on the fire in the middle, tons of seating areas, and it's all just fantastic. And the bedroom you get is the best in the entire game. A comfy bed, a divider, bookshelf, seating areas, tables. This is better than most actual hotels in the real world. And the exterior, just looking at it, would make anyone say, yeah bro, I want to stay there. Th that, that, was, that was so stupid, just cut that out of the video. <laughs> Good old Nord architecture, baby. The Candle Hearth Hall is super welcoming, man. Several floors, lighting on each window. The sign also fits perfectly with the story of a candle that never goes out. It's the first thing you see when you walk into Windhelm, so it's super iconic. Both large cities have amazing inns, so go figure. Next to the interior. It has a pretty boring entrance. That looks like a motel lobby any person could be murdered in. But the upstairs is an incredible relaxation hub. A unique kitchen as well. The company ain't half bad either. Pretty great overall. The place is also like massive. Like almost as big as my wife's ego after that video did really well. Seriously guys, thanks for that. You know, that video made her so happy seeing people comment on it. She read every single one of them. Solstheim. A very unique location for Skyrim. The, the game, it's not located in Skyrim. You get what I mean. And in this new land, there lies a single inn. The Retching Netch. This place is dope as crap, man. It's massive. With a cozy entrance going to a pseudo underground tavern looking like a bug just got done crafting it. It really stands out compared to all the others. The exterior is also incredible. Being that solstice time architecture kind of look, you know what I mean. The rentable room is also large with a super unique bed. And the name even has a story to it. Basically, the owner 
saw a man get really drunk and he threw a bottle of ale at a netch which made it uh, throw up. This place is definitely top tier, obviously seeing that it's number two. And what is number one you may be asking? <laughs> okay, I know it's generic, but ah yes, the quintessential tavern in Skyrim, the place any respectable, well, uh, person has been a thousand and a half times the bannered mayor. This is one of the first places any new player will go. And boy does it leave such a high bar that so many others just fall so friggin short. The design is snuggly, cozy homeliness with pillars making you focus on this huge fire centerpiece. Which is great for throwing Mikael in because he's the bard here. There we go. A huge bar and kitchen. The renting room is massive with an actual bed and not whatever the heck this was. The company is fantastic for the most part. If you sit down, someone will actually take your order like the royalty I am. The exterior is just as great, fitting that white run aesthetic perfectly. This place is just perfect all around other than Mikael, but we, like we said, he's burning right now. And of course, this place has a story to how it's got its name. Basically, a king died in combat, but his horse ran around holding up the flag high. The sign even references that. Cool sign overall. Not as good as Sleeping Giant Inn, but as we mentioned, uh, that one isn't as good. And Yasolda can even take over the place if the owner dies, man. This is number one easily for me, my friend. Hey man, thanks for watching, buddy. You made it through it. <laughs> Remember to leave those recommendations down below. Anyways, thanks guys. See ya.